It is Friday, April 12th, 2024. This is another edition of Baseball Today, our first ever live edition of Baseball Today, coming your way from Boomtown Brewery in downtown Los Angeles. That is my man, Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose. Producer Dan along for the ride as well. And production Bill is here as well as our amazing interns, Daniel and Tommy. And it is great to have you along for the ride. This is our first ever edition, live edition of Baseball Today. Can you believe it? We finally made it, huh? I love it. I always say when you and I get together, it's our best episode. To add to that, our baseball community, and I think this show is going to be great. And I want to say, I am a born and raised L.A. guy. I know you're a transplant, but we, we consider Chris an L.A. guy now, right? That's He's been in Hollywood long enough. Yeah, I, you, you won't believe how many fake body parts I've got just to blend in. It's great. You're a doctor. You need to talk with him. Um, I know it's Friday, and there's traffic, and yeah. everyone came down at this time to do it, and it really just means a lot. So thank you guys all for coming here. Thank you for being here. It's awesome. For those of you that are joining us via YouTube or on a podcast, we're also going to put out a separate Q&A, I believe, as well, that we're going to do with you guys later. So that'll be awesome. But as you know, we basically do five or six questions every day, and we want to thank you guys so much for listening. Every Monday through Friday, you can join the live show uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, pretty much at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday, it's 11.30 a.m. Eastern 8.30 a.m. Pacific. So what do you say we start with some questions? You good with these? I'm ready to go. Yeah, the stupid questions you send me every day. <laughs> Anytime you want to help out, feel free. <laughs> no, I'm good. I told you. He's, I'm too busy uh, barbecuing my tri-tip or, what, or <laughs> hanging out with Matthew again. Matthew yeah. wants to hang out. How about the Rams? Any Rams fans here? Okay. That's what I thought, Chris. Uh -huh. Let's do that. Since we are in Los Angeles, we're going to start with this. Which scenario would be better for baseball come October? And you can only choose one of these things. The Dodgers star-studded lineup, headlined by Shohei Otani, makes the World Series. Or the New York Yankees punch their ticket to the Fall Classic for the first time in 15 wow. years. It, wow, a lot it, of boost here. It can't be Dodgers versus Yankees. It can only be one of those uh, two okay, teams. Which okay, one is okay. better for the sport of baseball? I go so many different ways with this question. A lot of Dodger fans are wanting me to say that. So it just, it just depends, uh, Chris. Last year, I really liked the World Series matchup. I love the Diamond, Diamondbacks shocked the world. They had a really young, exciting roster. Mm -hmm. They had some veterans like my guy Longo on the team. They had the bullpen that figured it out. I love when bullpens figured it out in the playoffs. But I think collectively, uh, most people would want to see at least one big market team in the World Series. I'm going to say that I'd rather have the Dodgers in the World Series. And I'm not just playing to the crowd. I'm oh, not. Yes, you are. I am not. Because they're not going to like this one. I want to see them lose in the World Series. I do. I really? do. Yes. I'll explain my reasoning, okay? I think they are going to win a World Series with Shohei and Yamamoto and Betts and Freeman. I think they are going to win one, but I don't think it's fair that Shohei comes over here and Yamamoto comes over here and wins in their first year. I don't think it's going to happen. That doesn't sound like the right script to me. So I think, <laughs> right? I think that they are going to make it. I don't know if they're going to make it this year. In fact, I don't have them in the World Series this year. Uh, but if they do, I'd actually like them to lose so it makes it better for everyone when they win. Mm-hmm. If that makes any sense. No, it, all, it does. And, and, and I'll go further on that. The Yankees, I'd love to see them in the World Series too because guess what? It's really good for our company and all the people that we work with will be in better moods. <laughs> we um, need that. We're definitely. I, this, is, this might come off. I don't know how this is going to come off. I don't know how many compelling teams there are in the AL right now. Like I think that the Braves in the World Series is awesome. I think the Dodgers in the World Series is awesome. I think the Phillies in the World Series is awesome. In the AL, it's like you have the Yankees and then, what, the Astros again? No. Or That's not compelling. Like, so the o Yeah, I know. I know, I know, I know. Okay. The, the Orioles, like, that's a fun team. But, like, who else in the AL is kind of, like, compelling? Well, there, there isn't a team, right? I, I think in both, unfortunately, because the sport has become so regionalized, there aren't that many gripping stories outside of the coast. And that just stinks, right? It's the AL Central. It's the NL Central. I suppose when the Cubs are really good, that gets interesting. The Cardinals have a big fan base, but it's like, okay, they're, they're fine. They're fine. You guys are 
cute. We're the yeah, only three people in you know, the nation that believe in the Cardinals. I don't know what's wrong with us. They're a cute story, but I'm talking about having appeal throughout the country. And listen, I am from the Midwest, right? I, I love people from St. Louis and Chicago and Cleveland and Detroit. Like, those are my people. Those are the ones I hung out with growing up. Like, all we did was wait for the s- snow to stop falling by June. <laughs> and then we'd go do something else. You know, we'd love baseball. But that's not, it's not as compelling. And in the National League, you're right. American League, hello, like outside, give me another team. Like Baltimore is fascinating because they're so young and so talented. Yeah, and they're going to be there for a while. They're going to be competing for a World Series for quite some time, yeah. But Boston's going to, they're going to fade quickly. I think so too. Right? Toronto, like, it's almost like they're from a different country. Um, and then nobody cares about Tampa Bay. Out West, Seattle. Okay. Yeah, I mean. They'd be, they'd be fun. But Fine. there's just, yeah, I mean, even the Rangers, as star-studded as actually, if you really look at the Rangers, like, they're very star-studded as well. They spent a half a billion dollars on their middle infield. Like, they brought in Scherzer and DeGrom, like, all these people. But yeah. to me, there's, even they won the World Series last year, and I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I was excited for it, but it's just a different, I, I guess the history isn't there. Right. So let me give you the answer to the question, Right. We talked all offseason about the appeal of Shohei and wherever he landed that it would be much more than just a damn good baseball player joining the team, right? You're talking about bringing in a different country and eyeballs to that. I mean, if you have paid attention, there are three different Japanese companies that have since then signed on with the Dodgers. Major, major deals. I mean, yes, he's making $70 million a year, a lot of it deferred, but he's going to make $70 million a year. He's going to blow past that in terms of what he's bringing in. Yes. So we're talking about it. Japan could be watching the fall classic and watching it live at, I don't know what time it's going to be. I'm not smart enough to figure that out, nope. but you understand what I'm getting at. So there really is only one answer to this question, and that would be the New York Yankees. Oh, my gosh. It's, you, have I a prob- can't, you have a problem. I can't believe I said it. You like I to was, get booed. I will tell you this. I was there in 2009 handing out the commissioner's trophy the last time y'all were in it. And you were in diapers the last time that it happened. Now, that's not because he was two years old. It's because he was 12 and had a peeing problem. <laughs> but we don't really Shh, care about don't that. Don't talk about that. Sorry, my, my bad. Has, my that, bad. has everyone seen Dan's uh, hot dog machine? He posted that on his uh, social media. Like, it's literally, you can cook 20 hot dogs and 20 hot dog buns, and that's what he eats. Okay. I just had to mention that. Sorry. I don't know. A little context here. Probably context we didn't need. Okay. Sorry. So, listen, it's, it's been a while. The Yankees have not been there, and... They are the greatest brand in the history of this sport, and they need to get back in there just to remind people that they're more than just a good team. Okay, let me ask you this, because we just talked about uh, the Japanese market Mm -hmm. and and that being in the fold here if the Dodgers make the World Series. Uh, Strictly uh, U.S. residents, uh, viewership in the U.S., who Mm -hmm. gets more viewership, the Dodgers in the World Series or the Yankees in the World Series? You're you're like this guy. You're my guy go to for viewership. I know. Um, I do think that Shohei is one of one when it comes to that. So I do think, but this year, no, because his ability to pitch is what changes it. Agreed. And he's, you know, if he's starting game one of the World Series and hitting homers, that is something that we can all gravitate to. I don't care whether you like the Dodgers, don't like the Dodgers. It's just something that has fascinated us. But because he is a great DH, it's a different animal. That's why I'm saying this year, the answer is the Yankees. Next year, I would give you a different answer. Okay. But this year, that's the way I'm going. Uh, let's move on. We're now two weeks into this thing. What is the thing that has surprised you most? It could be good or bad. We're going to each give one team and one individual response. Oh, so we'll go okay. Team. That's this question. Okay. Do you understand it? Or I, do, I, I do. I do. I do. I got it. There's some times where he doesn't quite understand the questions. And sometimes I have to... I'm do. a high school grad. <laughs> Crespi High. And, yeah. Oh. Some people know that. I do my best, Chris. You do great. So what's the answer? Team. So for the team, I'm going to go bad here, and I'm going to go the Seattle Mariners. They, you know, look. Did, are you happy yeah, because you're a Mariners fan and you're, we suck? What who, is that? who wooed that? Right here? Okay. Um, 
I had a lot of high expectations for them, and they had a lot of plans for the offseason. You know, they shipped some players out, citing that uh, they wanted to change some of their offensive woes, and, you know, they have this beautiful pitching staff, some, some guys that have some absolute stuff. You know, I think a lot of people forget how good Luis Castillo is. Mm-hmm. He's their ace. Then you got Logan Gilbert. You got a bunch of guys behind him that can really throw the ball. So for me, when I look at teams and what when, in the preseason, when we're making our decisions on what we think is going to happen, I look at starting pitching and depth and, and, and all of that. And the Mariners on paper have that in spades, but they have not been able to solve the offensive equation. They just have not. I'm going to throw some uh, stats out at you guys right now. 29th in the league in OPS. 29th. In How many the teams league. are there? 30? There's 30. Yeah, the only bad. team that's worse than them. Wait, it just got updated. They are 28th in the league. Wow, congratulations. And what's up for Progress. me is all my friends walk in. What's up, everybody over Hi. there? Well, what's everybody wave to Trevor's uh, friends. And my wife. Olivia. Yes. Okay, so they jumped. And it's actually really heartbreaking for me because they jumped my twins. The oh, twins oh, oh. are now 29th in OPS. Mm. Tough one. Okay, so uh, offensively, they've been horrible. And what was the one thing? I'm sure everyone knows. What were they trying to work on in the offseason? Getting rid of what? Strikeouts. Strikeouts, right? Uh, so they're actually really good at that. They struck out the second most in the league. <laughs> Great. 138 strikeouts. The only one that struck out more is the Dodgers, but the Dodgers also hit homers and score runs. They've the, also played more games. And played more games. The Mariners have not been able to figure mm. out their game offensively. And then some of their pitchers, Luis Castillo, namely, has been really poor through three starts. So I expected them to be, I don't know if I picked them to win the AOS, but definitely in the running. Right now, they need to find an identity as a team. And you better really rally behind that pitching staff and make some offensive adjustments. Because right now, I mean, you're bringing up the rear in that division. And things are, like, I don't know where they go from here. Because they're not a great offensive team unless Mm -hmm. Julio just absolutely carries them. And Cal Raleigh figures some things out. Like, they have some guys, but offensively, it's just it's not enough even with the pitching staff. And if the pitching staff falters at all, they're going to be looking at, you know, bottom of the barrel in the AL West. All right, team-wise, I'm going to go with a positive. I talked about them on Friday's morning edition of Baseball Today, part of our day-night doubleheader here. Uh, the Kansas City Royals. Oh, yeah. And in part, who knew? Royals fans? I didn't know. Okay. Um, their pitching has shocked me. Shocked me. They've yep. given up the few fewest runs coming into the weekend in Major League Baseball. We knew that they were going to at least get some guys who could give them some length, right? Seth Lugo, Michael Walker are guys that they signed. We thought that Cole Reagans could take a really nice step. He was very, very good for them the second half of last year. Uh, Brady, Brady Singer is the guy we've kind of all waited on, right? When yep. he, he, I think he came out of Florida, if I'm not mistaken. First round pick, and we were like, oh, wow, this is going to be the guy. It has felt like forever since they have developed – a pitcher that has done something for them as a starter. So they have done exceptionally well. Uh, you know, I gave you some numbers this morning, but it's been nice to see them get off to a good start. And I think they're in a fascinating division. I think it could be any of those four teams that ends up winning it outside of the Chicago White Sox, who I think are going to be relegated at the end oh of the season. Oh, my goodness. So, they need uh, to do something there. Individually, something good or bad? Give me a quick one. I'm going to go uh, good here. It's my buddy Christian Yelich, who seems oh. to be back in MVP form. We did have a Brewers fan somewhere. Oh, it's our intern. Who cares about him? Not nice. Uh, Tommy, the- I care. I care. I'm just hard on the intern. I care. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, one, uh, one dotting it right now. The power seems back. And I, I saw him in the offseason uh, working. And he, he's always a hard worker. Things look a little, looked a little bit different. Uh, during the offseason, but you never know how that's going to play during the year. The thing I noticed, and I actually uh, know his hitting coach that he works with in the offseason very well, and I asked him this morning, I said, hey, like, did you get Yelly more upright in his stance? Because that's what it seems like. He's got that low crouch as he gets into his mm-hmm. load, and his eyes move a lot, and it seems to me like he's a little bit more upright, so he's using his leverage a little bit better. He's able to get to that high pitch. The, the power numbers are there. He's slugging 737 leading the league right now. Right. And he just says that they got him into a, like a better posture position, but Yelly has kind of figured that out on his own. So it's like he's just getting more athletic. And remember, this is a guy who twice in his career has one dotted it over a season. Mm. So he has that in him. The last couple of years, the power numbers have been down. The on-base percentage has still been there. Uh, but if you get Yelly with some power and you, and you pair him with Reese, I mean, the, the Brewers, I said, I knew it. When they traded Corbin Burns, that's more their speed, sneaking up on people. 
and they've been able to do that. They're first place in the Central right now. And it's really important. I don't mean to barge in on your computer here for a second, but I want to see how much he's making this year. Oh, it's 20, a lot. 20, it's, no, it's well, a lot. He's up, I mean, I'll get it. I got you. 26, I think. Sorry. My hands are clean. I washed them. Right. Uh, no, granted, year, it, yeah. was, it was Tuesday. For the foreseeable them. future, he's going to make $26 million a year. Right. So when you get up to that in a market like Milwaukee, you've got to play to your value or the um, entire organization will be screwed. Uh, for me, unfortunately, I'm going to go the negative way. Where's my Cardinals, dudes? Oh, shoot. Sorry, guys. What's the matter with Nolan Arenado? I mean, <laughs> they're like, we don't know. I, I looked it up. Now, I knew that, that his numbers were not good, but <laughs> this is amazing. Heading into the weekend, he, his slash line, I can't believe I'm laughing at this. This is horrible because I love him as a player. Uh, actually, I'm going to save that for somebody else, but his numbers are not good. Uh, he, his last home run, do you know his last home run? No. Go back to August. August 19th. Whoa. That was his last home run, and he, this is a guy who plays every day. His hard hit percentage is down to 26%. That's 15% lower than his career average and even 12% lower than a year ago. He's got not one, not two, but three extra base hits all year. His slug is a smidge over 300. Coors Field. Coors Field. Not not fair. Not fair. Nolan Arenado, he has hit well. He's hit fine outside of Coors Field. I understand those numbers get inflated there when you play 81 home games, but he hasn't been this. And if they're going to get back in this thing, it's up to him and Goldie to lead the way. Yes. I do want to show that I'm not biased in any way, so I will go a little negative on my twins. With runners in scoring position, they're hitting 116 with a 416 OPS. That's tough for me. It sounds like something you should share with your therapist. Like everything you get back to the twins. They better start playing well before I go broadcast some games. I'm not going to have it, Chris. I just won't have it. Hey, nice round of applause for our people that have been setting up and working hard here at Boomtown Brewery because the next question has to deal with Boomtown Brewery. Who is the one guy you need to sit down with and have a beer here to have a baseball heart-to-heart, like a cleansing of the soul because it has been a rough go? There's a lot of guys right now yeah. that I can pick from. But I'm going to go with a guy that I just want to have a beer with in general, but he's also struggling a little bit this year. And actually, the last couple of years, I'm going to go Trey Turner. Hmm. Trey Turner of the Philadelphia Phillies. This guy is like an all-world player, probably my favorite guy to watch in the big leagues. Career 830 OPS, 120 OPS plus. Uh, with the Phillies, it just has not been that way, Chris. The power numbers are gone. He's still stealing some bases. The defensive metrics are not with him. It seems like when the bright lights turn on postseason WBC we get hero Trey but during the regular season it just hasn't been that way and it's kind of shocking to me because he doesn't have to be the guy Mm -hmm. in that lineup there's a lot of really good hitters against him and I just when I watch him hit the it's the timing's a little off he's not as sure as you want someone like him to be like we've seen this guy put up incredible numbers throughout his career and playing shortstop you know a premium position stealing bags doing everything on the baseball field and it just hasn't been that way with the Phillies. So I'd love to just sit and have a beer with him and just remind him. I would just kind of glaze him, if you will. That's what the kids say these days. Mm. And I would just tell him how good he is and give him a hug and just hang out. So Trey Turner's my guy. Sounds like something that you should do in the San Fernando Valley, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't know what... Oh, I get it. I get it now. What we're no, doing. Okay. But... Chatsworth. Chatsworth. Okay. Okay. Um, That's an insight. You know what? Okay. You and I, I suppose... Your guy and my guy could share a private jet. I don't care who picks up the tab because they're both rich. Yeah. But um, I'm going to go with Nick Castellanos. Oh, my goodness. So I know I was stumbling over those numbers earlier. It's because I wanted to save it for him. His slash line is 163, 265, 163. What does that mean for you baseball fans? When two of those numbers are the same? That means there's no extra base hits. Even though Arenado's going, damn, man, can you hit the ball like to the wall or something? Um, The Phillies, I was doing a little research on this, and they put a big emphasis after being eliminated against the Diamondbacks in the NLCS on taking care of the chase rate. They, they, and for Castellanos, he's like, well, that's who I've been my entire career. That's kind of what made me aggressive hitter, sure, aggressive. And I think he feels like he's been dialing that back and hasn't been able to be him. I also think he doesn't love that he's hitting seventh, but that's part of the byproduct of not, not getting anything but singles. Like, they didn't pay him nine figures 
to be a singles hitter. And I think he's kind of lost his swag. Like when he was at his best, when he got traded to Chicago and had that ridiculous, ridiculous second half with the Cubs, and then he signed the deal with the Cincinnati Reds and can, they loved him there, and he had an OPS over 900. Like we saw Swaggy Castellanos. Yeah. And he had, I think he's totally lost who he is as a ball player. I don't think so uh, at all because what do we talk about with the Phillies? They don't care about the regular season. Like How can you not care when you're hitting 163 with like five Because if the singles? guy has a three for four day, his number is going to look completely different. I, and I, I just think both these guys that we just talked about, it, we're just you know choosing these guys kind of at random. There's a lot of guys that are struggling. Those guys will be okay. I don't know. I Castellanos hasn't been okay for a while. He just hasn't been. He has not been the same player. Like... I don't know. I think he's one of those guys that needs to unbutton his jersey all the way yeah, to his navel, yeah. have like six chains bouncing around and all you know, that No, he stuff. needs is Miguel Cabrera. When that guy was around Miguel Cabrera, he learned how to be a great hitter. It turned him into the player that he has been in years past. Maybe he needs to give him a call. Yeah, that would work. Or call me. <laughs> coach Trev. That way, Coach. Yeah. Uh, if you could pick any team to manage for the rest of the season, and it doesn't have to be because they're a great team. It could be because of the city they're in. It could be because Oof. of the dudes on the roster. Whatever it is, which team are you picking and why? I think we already talked about this team once. Mm. I'm going to go with the Kansas City Royals. There's just no expectations there, really. Uh, but yet they have this young, kind of awesome core there with Vinny P., uh, MJ Melendez has looked really good. I would love to just sit and watch. I think this is my main reason. I would love to sit on the top step and watch Bobby Witt Jr. play baseball mm. every single day. It's a good one. Like, he is so electric. Um, he can do everything on the field. And plus, you have a, an, a developing ace that you guys have, you know, have for, what, the next seven years. You can bring in pitching um, around him. And when that place, when they have a good team in Kansas City, it's like one of the best places to watch a game. And the fans are really there. You can tailgate in Kansas City, which is just amazing. So I, I would say Kansas City Royals, the expectations are low, but the, I think the ceiling is, is pretty high for them. Somebody has blocked out his trips to Kansas City in July and August. How hot is it there, dude? It's like you're playing on the sun. Yeah, you have to, like, cold beer, Chris. In the dugout? Yeah. You're oh. a manager. You do whatever you want. <laughs> Did you ever have a minor league manager that drank on the job? Oh, a thousand. In the minor leagues? Yeah. You don't even know some of the guys I played with in the minor leagues. It's, put it this way. I had uh, Stan and Stu Clyburn. They were twins. You can look them up. Uh, they both had Hooters golf bags because they spent so much money at Hooters that they like, were in some club. I love the wings, too. Stuff. I love the wings, so, too. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. The wings were actually good. I hate the food at Hooters. I do. I do. Not just because Olivia's here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate Hooters so much. It's the worst. <laughs> what time is uh, dinner reservation? 7 o'clock Hooters? Sounds awesome. Roll on that. Oh, my goodness. Um, for me, it's the New York Mets. I Whoa. Well, I, I always wanted to live in New York for a little while. I never got that opportunity. Um, so I wanted to have a place in New York. I wanted to try it out. And I don't think I could handle the whole pressure cooker of the Yankees sort of deal. Plus, I like Booney, so we'll let him have his job. Uh, I'd like to manage the Mets. I think it'd be fun. Um, Francis, Francisco Lindor has oh, always been one of guy. my yeah, favorite guy. players, so I would like to watch him on a daily basis. And if I did well, Stevie Cohen would take care of me. So I kind of like that part of the job, too. I just watched the movie Dumb Money on uh, Netflix. It's about the GameStop saga, and, all, and Stevie Cohen is very much prominent in that movie. It's pretty funny. Yeah? Yeah. I would like, also like to be employed by Steve Cohen. Yeah. I See, like, I'm, yeah. I'm on to something. Okay. I like that answer. And plus, I kind of like their stadium. Have, you, have anybody been up to City Field? It's solid, right? It Good is. place. Yeah, I like it. I think uh, it's a fun place to watch a game. No? I think both New York stadiums kind of suck. Really? What don't you like about them? Too concrete. I wish, uh, I said this all the time, Yankee Stadium, I, I know what they're trying to do. It's a replica of the old, uh, the old stadium, but I think they had a real chance to do something like really innovative in the stadium. Like, what did business. you want it to be built out of styrofoam? No, I don't I mean, know, too man. At the time, they spent a billion dollars, which was crazy to build, on a, uh, to build a stadium, and it just looks the same. 
Well, I think that was the goal. That's the goal, I know, but I think they missed something there. I do. I will say this. Uh, what's the club behind home plate? The Legends Club in New York? They outkicked their coverage there. That's why there's so many empty seats yes. behind home plate. It's not because the Yankee fans stink. They're great fans. But that place is so good. So good. So if you get tickets to a Yankees game, you get the Legends Club somehow. Now It's not like I have season tickets there. I've had them like three times in my life. It's a great place. Yeah, you don't want to leave them. They serve lobster and they crab serve the and best crazy stuff. Shit there. That's crazy. Uh, we had those seats one time, and Josh, who's our oldest son, he was probably, I don't know, 12 at the time. He ate so much, he puked at the stadium. I've been there. Yeah. I've been there. Yeah, well, yours was a different reason. He was 12. Uh, what is your one preseason prediction that could be so far off base this year that even Ipe thought, yeah, that's oh a great idea. Gosh, dude. Sorry. Why are we going there? Too soon? Too that's soon. a lot of money. That, I heard so he was seriously money. just in shackles just down the road. Is that true? Nobody saw him on the way in, did they? Jeez. He's not here, is he? No, he really is really close. He is close. Oh that's true. Gosh. Uh, well, I mean, there's so many of them. I, I, I had the Mariners staff as one of the best staffs in baseball. We did the mm-hmm. whole, like, position unit draft on Talking Baseball, and I thought I was going to steal with them. Turns out I'm not. Um, I also picked the Twins to win the Central Division, like, by a landslide. Mm-hmm. You did. Us three were all together. That's not working out right now, so I'm going to go with that one. I really thought that the Twins were going to run away with the division. I thought that they just had a polished roster. I wasn't too crazy about their offseason. I think they could have definitely added a starting pitcher. Uh, I wanted a, 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 like a premium bat. I thought Reese Hoskins would have fit perfectly on the team, but you know, knowing that they weren't going to spend any money, I knew that wasn't really an option. I said, let's trade for Dylan Cease. We got a bunch of players there at the AAA level that could, could fetch a guy like Dylan Cease, and they didn't do it. Uh, we're, I think we're already seeing the depth problem there. We're seeing the rest of the division catch up to him. So I think in the end, I think that's going to be my worst prediction is the Twins running away with the division. It's just not going to happen. There's four teams legitimately that could win that thing. And right now the Twins are, you know, besides the White Sox, at the bottom of the division. It's horrible. Yeah, that's, that's a good call. I, I hope it's a tightly contested division. I, I still think you guys will be there at the end. But, yeah, I don't think it's going to be a runaway. For me, I, I think I've got one individual and one team. I'm so bad at this stuff. I can pick a team and yeah, an individual. Pretty- uh, my team thing is the Toronto Blue Jays. I don't know why I've been on their bandwagon the last few years. Like, I keep looking at their roster, and I say, boy, they're pretty complete. Like, they've got a really, really dependable pitching staff. Uh, when Romano is there at the back end of the bullpen, which he hasn't been so far, you know, they seem to be okay. They've got stars kind of all over that lineup. Like, I feel good about their lineup, and then they just kind of, were, yeah, they're okay. So I said they were going to be in the World Series, and – um I don't know if I was drunk when I wrote that or what, but I, I don't feel great about it right now. Uh, individually, I had Max Fried winning the Cy Young, and I think if you're a starting pitcher, you have to pitch longer than the second inning in order to qualify. That hasn't really happened for Max. I hope, it, I hope he does turn it around this year. I think he'll be fine. I look forward to seeing him, you know, what he, what he can get in free agency, but we've got to pick it up a little bit, so... There you go. I didn't. I mean, I knew he had a bad first start. I didn't know his second start was so bad. Four and a third, Dude, seven earned runs. Yeah, he gave up, I think, six in the first in his second start. Sheesh. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's like in line for a massive payday. Yeah. Well, not right now. Not right now. Okay. No, we've got to get another 29 starts or so. He's, he's an L.A. guy. You can cheer for Max. Sure Reed, can. You know, maybe not sure against can. the Dodgers, but son of a gun. All right, we're going to end it with this. Your favorite baseball memory. It could be from any level – it could be you playing. It could be you as a fan. You take this wherever you want because I want people to feel good about themselves as we finish the show. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go like a cheery one, then a dark moment. That's okay. Is that okay? Funny because the question said favorite. Although the, the dark moment was one of my favorite memories. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, first one I think is pretty uh, easy, so that's why I'm not going to go too far into it. Uh, my debut. Um, that was awesome. Love Olivia that. Olivia was there for that. Ah. Um, we, uh, we played the Brewers. I like, had a great game. It, like, it featured Ryan Braun, who I grew up with, Delman Young, who I grew up with. I got to hit against Jeff Supan, who was like a mentor wow. of mine. He went to the same high school as me. Like, it all kind of was like full circle there. So I love that moment. Uh, the dark moment. And I'll never forget this because my dad never did this. It was like one time he did this. Uh, I was playing in a, a showcase, like an all-star game somewhere in the Valley. And there's a guy named Chris Faleka who was a shortstop for Hart High School. He ended up playing the big leagues. Mm-hmm. I think he's the hitting coach for the Reds right now, maybe. He was at some yeah. point. 
um, I missed, I made an error on a ground ball. I was a high hopper. I remember it like it was yesterday. I came in, and the ball went under my glove. And, like, I was a pretty good defender. I didn't make a lot of errors at the time. My dad, we, we were driving home, and uh, he looked at me, and he goes, you know, that ball in the third, he goes, Valleca would have made that play. Oh. Yeah. And that's not like my dad at all. He would never say it, but, it, like, it, it's, it stuck with me so much. I was like, fuck you, dad. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean that. It's his birthday today, too. Wow. <laughs> so I love you, dad. <laughs> um, Happy birthday, old man. Fuck you. <laughs> That's no, great. but it stuck with me because I was like, you know what? Like, he probably would have made that play. And, like, it just, it, from that day forward, I was like, I don't want anyone to, like, be better than me, like, ever. And I think that really, like, I was maybe a sophomore or, or just getting into my junior year, and I was like, no one's going to be better than me. And that kind of, like, made me Drove just you. work harder. Good. All right. Yeah, yeah that does deserve it. So her. from dark to light, all right? Yeah, that's good. So mine might feel dark, but it's not. How many of you have kids here? Raise your hands. Okay. So kids are the best teachers in the world. For those of you that don't have kids yet, I'm telling you, you will remember this comment that I'm telling you. Because you'll be like, man. In 2016, like I love the Guardians, right? They were the Indians then. I love them. I love them. And I've taught our two sons, Josh and Brady, who are born and raised in Los Angeles, to love Cleveland sports too. It is something that brought my family together. I have been fortunate enough to work in this industry because of the passion of the Rose family. It's like our DNA. Like That's how we planned our vacations was around our sports teams. And some of them sucked. Like the Guardians, <laughs> the Indians, the first 23 years of my life did not finish higher than fourth in their division. That's tough. I and mean, think about that. Like you can't trip into a third place finish. How were the Cleveland Browns? They were great in the 80s when I was growing up. We won five division oh, titles. I wasn't alive. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> So when they, you know, they had made it in 95 and 97. And in 2016, we had this magical run. And we were up 3-1 on the Cubs. And going back to Cleveland, it was 3-2. And I was flying the family in during the school year. Our oldest one was turning 16 on game six of the World Series. Like, it was all set up to have this moment together. I'd never won a championship in the history. I was 45 years old at the time, and my te- none of my teams had won anything. I was like, this is aligning. This is it. They fly in in time for the game. We're all there, and the Cubs score a bunch of runs in the first inning, and game six wasn't close. So we're all down. We're like, game seven, that's never going to happen. Well, game seven happens, and we're down six to one. And then we get to six to three, and then we get to six to four, and Rajay Davis hits the home oh run that freaking ties the game. It is one of the greatest home runs in the history of the sport. And then the rain comes, and we oh. end up losing, right, in extra innings to the Cubs. And we are walking back to the hotel, and little Brady, who is 11 years old at the time, looks up to me. He's holding my hand. I'm going to cry when he's – he goes – Dad, it sucks that we lost, but at least we saw it together. Wow. And I was like, I was like, oh my God. Right? Like, it's pretty good. 11 years old to say that. And, you know, now I look at him, he's got like five games left in his high school baseball career. And for those of you that have seen when I post pictures of him, he's 18 years old and he looks 30. Like he's got this full beard. And I still, every night when I go in and I kiss him on the forehead, good night, I look at him and I just remember that line every time and the impact it had on me. So it sucks that we lost the series. But the fact that he said that, I was like, man, that's pretty good. So that was heartwarming. Love so there that. you go. That's a good one, Chris. That a boy. That was a good one. Way to end the show on a high note. Yeah, we tried. That a boy. Um, Shoot. This has been amazing. We are going to continue with the Q&A portion of the program. But all I can tell you is this, and I think it's important to get this in uh, for, the, for the regular show that, and the people that are tuning in. I've had several people come up uh, during our time where we were just talking before the show. Tell us how important the community is. I've had the good fortune of being in this business for 30 years. Um, I've hosted some events that have been seen by millions and millions of people, whether it was college football or the NFL or Major League Baseball and all that sort of stuff. You do not get any sort of connection with the people that you talk to. You don't. The only way that we survive is because of you, whether it's in the chat, 
if you agree or disagree with us, um, things that we say, but we know that we play an important part in your lives. And the fact when you come up and you tell us that, it makes us want to be better at what we do and continue to churn out content and continue to bring you things like the warehouse games and shows like this and events like this. Uh, so thank you for telling us because it, does, it means the world to us. That's no joke. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Hey. There's a camera right there. That's a good camera. Sign us off like you always do, big boy. That's right. So for all of our amazing people here at John Boy Media, our one-of-a-kind producer, Dan. <laughs> our production dude, Bill. <laughs> our fantastic interns, Daniel and Tommy. Right, fine, fine, fine. The wonderful people here at Boomtown Brewery. And our amazingly talented Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose. We will see you Monday here on Baseball Today. Good job, buddy. Way to go. Awesome. Way to go. Oh, no. Let's... Padres fans not happy right now. Yeah, that's okay. Not oh, it's some thumbs. Got down. another one, Harrison here. Uh, I get you. Hey, we did run a little long. Yeah, we started a little late. Um, yeah. So I say we get these out of the way. Totally. Q and A's, and then we'll get you guys yeah, on your way to the got... game. So what we're gonna do with these? We have a hundred dollar gift card. We have a seventy five dollar gift card, and then we had a twenty five dollar gift card, which I didn't think was like enough. Yeah. For anything, so I'm gonna add a fifty dollar bill in there. Fifty. <laughs> sorry, Liv. Wow. Liv, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wow, that's sorry, not, babe. Holy smoke! You can expense that to the company, by the way. Um, I don't know if I can. So there it is. It's yeah. really there. So, um, and all we're gonna do is pick uh, names out of this thing. Do it. Yeah. So I don't want to. I feel like we should have an audience member do it because I feel. No, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> you guys will probably cheat. <laughs> Search for their own all right, name. All right, here we go. For, uh, we're gonna start with one of the twenty-five plus the fifty, so seventy-five dollars. See, Crespi there. does teach you math. I crush that. Yeah, I hate. I fucking hate math so much. Can okay. you just pick one? There we go. Everett Van Vizza. Yeah! Everett yeah. Van Vizza. <laughs> Van Bugalik. Get on up here. You come the... on down. Well, don't you dare come up on stage. Just in the front, it's fine, sir. Wait. Holy smokes, it's okay. He's... There you go. There you go. Thank you for coming. Good job. Out. Thank you for coming. All right, you do the next one. All, All right. right. Hurry up. Yeah, I'm going. Hurry the... Wait, no, no. Switch one. Switch. Hold on. Jesus. Everyone needs a fair chance. Interns aren't doing sh shit up here. All right, you guys stay down there. It's my stage. Brandon Corletto. Where are you? Where are you, Brandon? Oh, yeah. There we go. That's 75. That away. To the JM shot. I have my own tees over here. If you want to buy a Trevor Plouffe tee, no big deal. Yeah. I only get a little percentage of that. Thank you, Brandon. Thank Thanks you, for man. being hey, here, bro. Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it. Nice. And then we have a uh, 100 bucks to the JM shop, the big dog right here. All right, I'll do this one. I'm not looking. Okay, I like that one. Oh, a small one. And a very nice penmanship for Matthew Medina. Oh, the funky Cole Medina. Yeah. Oh, there he is. That's a good one. There that way, go, Matthew. Man. Thanks for coming out. All right, Matthew. He wins great hair. Interns, that is some great interns hair. come clean this up. No, we stop hey, it. No? Stop talking to them that way. All right, we still have two fifty dollars generation, generation is soft gift I'm certificates sorry. that we're going to give based on the best questions. So we're going to try and get through as many as possible. Uh, Dan is going to be. Why don't we give that to uh, maybe Daniel, who can run around because you're going to have to. We have to be able to hear it. All right. So if you have a question, Daniel, head on out there. Tell us your name, where you're from, and fire away. What's going on, fellas? Uh, my name's Jake. I'm here visiting from San Diego. Nice. Yeah. Oh, be nice yeah. to Jake. Let's go, Jake. Huge fan, daily listener. Um, question has nothing to do with the Padres, so chill out, Dodgers fans. <laughs> <laughs> 
Royals and Pirates both off to hot starts for teams with low expectations going into this year. But which of those two clubs would you rather be a fan of for the next five years? That's like a baseball that today is, question. Oh my god! You're awesome. You're hired. Listener. Hired. Holy shit! That I, I think it's the Pirates because I love their pitching. Yeah, man. I real. I mean, Skeens is going to be unbelievable, right? He's going to be unbelievable. I got you, I got you. As long as he stays healthy. You'd like to think so, but we thought we've we've thought that about a lot of people. You, you get to the big leagues, it's different, dude. Like clearly, he has the stuff, and I th- I think with pitchers nowadays, we can really hone in on who's going to do well. Track man, you know the spin rates, you know, you know where they can throw, what quadrant they can throw to, and what that's going to do. You can really just like, match them up on the computer. How's this going to work out? So yeah, Skeens is, is is going to be good. Jared Jones. Hot boy, by the way, mm. uh, looks pretty good as well. And then Mitch Keller gets forgot about a lot in that, in that rotation. I'd probably pick the Pirates as well. As much as I want to, as much as I want to see Bobby Witt, like I said, every single day, uh, I think there's just a little bit more. I don't want to call it certainty, but I, I feel like there's a little bit more on the on the Pirates roster. And Pittsburgh is a beautiful place. It is beautiful. To play the, some if you haven't been to the ballpark, it is it's one of my favorites. It is a great, great place. The only thing I worry about, I, I think the Royals are going to spend money. I mean, they already gave Bobby Witt two hundred plus million dollars, right? The question is with the Pirates is if they if they do get better with those couple of guys leading the rotation, are they going to be willing to pay? They paid Brian Reynolds. That was nice. Key Brian Hayes is under contract, but they're going to need more than that if they're if they're going to make a substantial leap. All right, where are we? Who's got the uh, right here? Hey, so my name's Jeff. Uh, hey, big Jeff. Dodger fan. Grew up in Arcadia. Yeah, that way, Jeff. Uh, yeah. I really appreciate what both of you said about, like, the disappointing parts of baseball and, like, you know, the, you know, it's mostly based on failure. If you're really good, you're still failing seven out of ten times. So, Tre- Trevor, this is mostly a question for you. Um, I kind of wanted to know, like, in your career, what was more disappointing? The fact that you had 28 grounded into oh double plays God. in 2015, <laughs> which, was, which was just off the major league record of 36, <laughs> or that when you finally got your shot, you only had a 22 OPS plus in your first year? That's tough. That's a tough one. Okay. <laughs> Hired. So, Hired. So these two are just, like, not going to go to you, by the way. Um, you know what? I've got 100 in here for you, Jeff. <laughs> That was great. I actually have an answer for this one. It was the first year not playing that well, to be honest with you. Because I'll tell you why. You know who else has led the league in uh, grounded into double plays? Miguel Cabrera. Oh, fucking, yeah. Fucking Harmon Killebrew, bro. Jeff. You know all it means, Jeff, is that I hit the ball hard. That's and shit, right. And I'm just not that fast. That's what that means, okay? <laughs> Uh, but the first year, you want to have initial success. I did my first game. I never really got a fair shot. I mean... Uh, my first year, I was I played very very sporadically. Never had done that in my baseball career. I was always a starter, uh, but you want to perform when you get to the big level, and it sucked. I mean, whenever I was not good in the big leagues, it was tough for me, Jeff. So, <laughs> you know, I'll say that for sure. I will say this. I hated that question. <laughs> I appreciate you being a good sport. That was that was very nice. Do you want to know a little secret? What's up? I conversed with Jeff. Right oh, there. you son of a god. No, I did not plant the question, right? I did not plant that question. All right, Jeff. I said, make sure You're you have some hook. fun. He's a guy that can take it. And so, thank Trevor Plouffe for taking that. <laughs> that was nice. I don't need applause for that. Yeah, you do. You're a good guy, though. All right, where are we, Daniel? Hey, what's up, guys? Tyler from St. Louis. Hi, Ty. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, daily listener, thanks for everything you do. Thank you. Um, we're, we're skeptical of ownership in St. Louis. I'm not sure if you would understand why that might be. And we see the transition of ownership in mm-hmm. Baltimore, kind of see where that organization's going and what ownership seems to be uh, willing to do. So I wanted to know from both of you, who do you think is the ideal owner mm. of a Major League Baseball team in 2024? And we have an addendum to that question. When are we going to get sequence with Trevor Plouffe back? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I do. I, thank you. I did love doing that show. We kind of ran into some copyrights and stuff. We don't own the rights to all the videos that we do. Uh, so that was there. Um, I would love to do it, man. We'll, we'll, we'll figure some stuff out. Dan, this is when I met Dan, by the way, when he was like my producer on that show. And I had a lot of fun doing it. And people do ask about it quite often. And I think it's just like, it's a fun show. Uh, so we'll, 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 we'll figure some stuff out. I might do like a, a shorter version, almost like a, TikTok sort of 
aspect to it. Just go over some good plays and stuff. Uh, ideal owner for me, I think that's a very good question, and I'm assuming you mean like that are already owners in the big leagues? Oh, mm. shoot, man. I mean, a guy like Mark Cuban seems like he'd be great. You know, what he did for the Dallas Mavericks. Um, I mean, uh, by the way, he was going to be in Major League Baseball. He wanted to be yeah, the owner of the right? Chicago Cubs. He wanted to be the owner of the Chicago Cubs, and the rest of the league looked at him like he had six heads. Like, really? We want this knucklehead in our sport? Yes. Yes. Because he was a forward thinker, and it would have I think it would have helped us substantially. Yeah, I, substantially. I, it's crazy that they shut him down. I, I'll say this. I think the Dodgers have done a really good job with their new ownership. You get the whole Magic Johnson tweeting thing going on um, from time to time. That's always fun. And mm-hmm. they're obviously willing to spend. But I think, I think Steve Cohen's, like, I think he might be, like, the gold standard because yeah. he's willing to spend money, but then he's also like figuring out he's, a, he's, I don't know about his past and all the sec violations and all that. Like I'm kind of putting that out the window right now, but he's figuring out what it takes to run a baseball team and what it means. So now he's investing in the farm system. He's trying to get up his uh, scouting department. He brings over Stearns from the Brewers. Like I think he's really figuring that out and couple that with the fact that he's the richest owner in baseball, like that's kind of what I you think want. it's sports. No, uh, Bomber. Bomber? Yeah, Bomber's got to be it. So, yeah, I, I would say Cohen's probably like my guy right now. I agree. I mean, why wouldn't you want. He, it, now, you never know what these guys are like behind the scenes. You know, I mean, yeah. billionaires are billionaires for a reason. They don't like to be told what What's to do. What's it like to be a billionaire? I You're no close. You, this guy, I went to his house today. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We were, we're very close. That would, that would be the size of his bathroom. Yeah, you're right. My house. Um, so, by the way, one cute little Cuban story. He used to come on Best Dam a ton. And we had a, uh, an event where we did it at one of the beaches. And then he came out and partied with us at night. And you figure, it's Mark Cuban. Like, maybe he'll pick up the tab. No, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't want anything to do. He turned and ran the other way. I was like, Mark, I guess that's how billionaires remain billionaires. That's why he's rich. Yeah, yeah no shit. that's it. Where are we, Daniel? Right here. How's it going? I'm Jared, also from San Diego. So, yeah. Hey, yeah, Kyle. Shout out to us. My, my friend uh, Kyle over there is from San Diego, too. He's got the Talking Baseball poncho on. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, we had those. Those are nice. That's, he made that himself. My question, oh. kind of, it's like a nerdy baseball question. What I specifically go to, like, Tony Gwynn. That's the Padres guy. But what, like, maybe Tony Gwynn and Greg Maddox, like, what pitcher or hitter from a different era would you want to see versus like the analytics oh, throw 99 good. or you're a bum hit, you know, 70 home runs or you suck. Like Tony Gwynn obviously didn't do that. Greg Maddox was obviously, you know, hitting his points. How do you think that would translate? And what do you think they would maybe do today? Or maybe is there someone today that you would rather put back then that could have been better in a different analytical type era? Well, I don't think Tony Gwynn would be valued today. Like, his OPS is not great. He'd be like Luis Arias. A better Luis Arias. Yeah, but uh, he was great. God, he was such a good ball player. You know, like the first decade of his career. He could run. He could play defense. He was fantastic. I mean, I've never seen a guy control the bat the way he did. But it, for whatever reason, and hopefully that is changing a little bit because the athleticism seems to be coming back into the game a little bit more, at least they say it is. I don't know. That's actually a really good question because usually when we think about something like that, it's like, okay, what would Babe Ruth do in today's yeah. game? And the, the answer is absolutely fucking nothing. Right. <laughs> Babe Ruth didn't play against, uh, like, any Dominicans, any Venezuelans, no black people. Like, come on. Right. Like, this was just not it. I'll, I'll have that opinion until the day I die. Uh, but Maddox, I think, is very fascinating. I would love to see what he would be able to do. I think that with, the, like, the strike zone and, like, the box on the TV and like what umpires go through now, like would he have not has been as good? I mean, he got this far off the plate a lot, dude, because he kept hitting it and hitting it and hitting it. And now they will not, they won't give that to you because they know on their report card, right. That it's going to be a negative. Yeah. He and Glavin. I'd be very interested to see. That's a really good question. I would be very interested to see mm-hmm. Greg Maddox in today's game. It's a good one. That's, it's in the running. It's in the running. Where are we, Daniel? Yes. Oh. Hey. Hey. How's it going? How are you? Good. Um, only Guardians fan here. So, hey. You know. Not true. Well, Not true. Two, well, okay, we got two. We got two. Yeah, okay, okay that's um, it. So it's kind of related, actually. Um, my question is, how important do you think 
availability and good broadcasting is to the growth of the sport and um, our youth right now. And honestly, I feel like, I don't know, it's related because I love Hammy, you know, and right. one of my favorite broadcasters. But it's hard to actually watch a game. Everything's, like, blacked out in most areas. I feel like the distribution of the sport is hard right now, and I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that. They keep telling us that that's going to get solved soon. Now, it's going to come to a head next year. I'm just telling you that a lot of these teams that, that do have Bally's as their primary sponsor, it's, there's going to be a seismic shift next year. And I don't know if that means that Major League Baseball is going to take half of the broadcasts, kind of like the Padres and the Diamondbacks, and take them over. It's possible, but when they do, if they do that, they really need to revamp everything. They need to have an understanding of how people are consuming the sport. And do I think that the pitch clock has helped, you know, with things like that to get more? Like, we're all baseball fans. We're going to watch it whether the game took three hours and a minute or two hours and 32 minutes, right? We love the sport. They've got us. They've got their claws in us. That's not going to change. But my son, who's 18 years old and... You know, he loves the Guardians, but he's not going to watch every game. I don't know what's going to make the appeal. You know, I, just because games aren't blacked out on his phone, is that going to make the biggest difference? I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, it's very difficult. I mean, I'm doing, I've been doing broadcasting for the Twins that started last year, and I try to approach it like it's an entertainment business. I, that's what I do here as well. Like, it's sports, but, like, we need to entertain people. That's how you get people to watch the games. I don't know if I make any difference whatsoever. It's just there's so many more options available to everyone, and particularly the youth nowadays. And I, I don't know how you continue to capture that audience. Like some, something has to happen, whether it's, I don't know, like is VR a thing still? Like, you, you know, like getting in the game. I know they're trying to work on that a little bit. Um, something has to happen to capture the youth. And right now I, I don't think it's happening. Maybe MLB The Show is the answer. Because that seems about, you know, a lot of the youth still continues to play that game. It's yep. one of the better games out there and one of the most popular games out there. So maybe it's, it's something there. But the broadcast, like, I, there's only so much you can do to spice up a regular season baseball game. Yeah, because it's not appointment. There's 162 games. Exactly. Yeah. So if I miss one, two, or three because I'm on vacation, nobody's ever missing a football game. Like, well, they, it's, yeah, it's, it's scarcity. Yeah, that doesn't happen. Now, the NBA... It's kind of the same sort of deal. Yep. The, the regular season is meaningless. Like, why? I, I think we have to try and figure out what is it that, about Caitlin Clark that captivated the, the world over the last year? I mean, seriously, like, I don't know what it was. It's, is that just one of one, or is that something that's going to help grow when she becomes a star in Indiana in the WNBA? Is it something that baseball can learn from? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I wish I had answers to this because it's befuddled me. I wish we could give you a better answer, but we all understand that there's a, a glaring need. Yes, over here. Time for a couple more probably? Yeah. I love the podcast. Just to let you guys know, it's awesome. Thank you. I Thank enjoy you. what you guys do. Thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, with the call-up or the arrival of Jackson Holiday and Churio and all the, the young stars, if you were a general, general manager, who would you choose to extend and, and why? That question. It's such a good question. We might have to save it for Monday's show. <laughs> so, so I'm serious. Since the, since the two Jacksons are playing against one another this weekend, it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Let's answer a little bit. I always go middle infielder. So I know Jackson Merrill was a shortstop, uh, and they've moved him to the outfield. Um, so I guess there's, there's that. But I guess I'd, I'd say Jackson Holiday because of the lineage and um, – I mean, I guess I got to see him play too. I, I want to see him play first because Churio looks like he's the real deal. He's, yeah. and I've heard from many people. Yelich in the offseason told me like this guy is a stud, and everyone talks so highly about him. And he's proved that he's he's had a, a nice start to the season. Um, but I always side with I always side with the infielder. So I, I'd probably say Jackson Holiday. Yeah, I, I'm gonna go with Churio. Okay. I think that dude. He looks like such a just stud. Just because man. Jackson's been 0 for his first two games, that's why you say that. If he was 4 for 8, yes, what because would you say? I tend to judge people he based does. on 8 at bats. Well, how many that does Churio have? That seems very logical. I'm just telling you. But he already got his deal, by the way. So he already got his money. And it's pretty cheap, too. Yeah. I mean, it could end up being very cheap. I would like to be $80 million cheap, too. Yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, do we have a couple more before we get out? 
Where are we? Over here. Uh, hey, hey. Um, I'm. My name is Nikhil. I am from the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm a Giants fan. Holy. Uh, shit. Uh, you know, uh, wouldn't expect anything less. Appreciate y'all. Did you like? <laughs> did you like Gabe Kapler? Uh, you know, honestly, I mean, he he led us to a hundred five win season. I thought I thought there were a lot of problems with the roster. You know, last year I felt like it was a roster issue, not not really a coaching issue. Oh. Fifty dollars. That's my, that's my opinion. <laughs> um, uh, the question that I had, um, you know, it's it's kind of a plague um, in our sport right now is elbow injuries. Okay. Um, I feel like um, there's been a lot of like you know speculation and stuff. Um, I think Glass now posted some, some like a videos circulating of him on Twitter saying like you know the the rosin um, and the elimination of like the sticky stuff has um, led to more injuries. Um, you know Alex Wood uh, on Twitter said that it was um, you know kids like you know playing all, ball all year round um, and obviously like. Um, I guess there was like somebody who said something about mechanics and the the uh, snapping of the elbow. Um, in your guys' opinion, um, what do you think is is the problem and how can it be fixed? I know like we're doing pitch counts and stuff for kids, but it doesn't seem to be. Um, you know, people are just trying to throw ninety nine hundred all day, and I don't know if it's um, if that's it. But what do you all think? Well, I, I do want to take this opportunity to tell you that Monday. We've got an edition of Rose Rotation coming out with Tyler Glass now. Yeah. I just interviewed him. Now, he's always great on the show, for those of you that have listened. Uh, I did the interview earlier today, and when I tell you that it is the best he's been, I'm not just saying it because I really want you to, I'd love for you to listen to everything. For that topic in particular, listen to it. He is unbelievable on it, and he kind of changed my mind a little bit on where I sit on this because I've been very vocal of that I, I said this recently, I think last week, that I feel like ma- that the MLBPA and Major League Baseball have to have a joint press conference to kind of say, we understand that there is a problem here. That'll and we, never happen. Now, I know. It'll but never happen. But if you ultimately want to change something, people have to be willing to give something up. And that means being right, that it's definitely the pitch clock or it's definitely the chase for velocity or it's definitely the year-round pitching or whatever it is but to recognize that there is a problem and that we have to get together. Tyler Glass now blew that whole thing up. I, and I, I couldn't believe it. I asked him a bunch of follow-up questions. Well, what about this? What about that? And he had answers. And the way he delivered, for those of you that listen to him regularly, just the way he delivered it was sensational. You will have su- – I, I can't do it justice. I can't do your question justice. Listen to it Monday and then find me on social media and tell me what you think about it because it is – Unreal how good he was on it. True. Speaking of Tyler Glass now, everyone's a fan of his. Obviously, he's from uh, Valencia or Hart, went to Hart High. Mm -hmm. Um, I asked Olivia the other day, I said, what do you think of this guy? Is he a good-looking guy? Because I'm going to do my hot boy list again, and I just wanted to get her opinion. You know what she said? Eh. Eh. She didn't like the hair, which, like, I think is, like, a common thing. Like, do girls not like guys with long hair? Sorry. Oh, you like it, okay. Yeah, so I don't know. Is she like in the minority? Like, is Tyler Glass now hot or not? Very hot. See, Liv, I don't know. Well, so we had breakfast. (laughs) We, uh, when we did our episode in bed together last year, remember that one? Those of you that saw that? I know it sounds weird, but it's true. Oh, you and Tyler. Yeah. Yeah, He was in one bed, I was in another bed. That's where we shot our first ever episode together. He then had breakfast with the Rose family, which was awesome. And uh, so Michelle was like, yeah, okay, he's six foot eight and he's an Adonis. But then you like talk to him and then she was like, yeah, he kind of won me over big time. I was like, this is great. Yeah, I've got no shot here. 